Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. This is going to be my me uh, my second message of the day, and it's going to be. I basically I have to do Monday and Tuesday here, and of course it's going to be Wednesday morning, wouldn't you know? <laughs> I'm just like that is so me. This is actually not going to be based in scripture. The principles will be there, but it won't actually be from scripture itself. It'll be from a dream that I had last night. I woke up. And this dream was just popping in my head of something that I had seen in the dream. And I'll share it with you. It's gonna, it's, I usually don't share things like this with you guys, so this will probably sound a little bit weird, maybe even a little bit spooky spiritual. Definitely the most spiritual things that I've shared on this channel so far. And this is primarily directed at Christians, so if you're not a believer in Christ, feel free to listen uh, and feel free to critique how weird and bizarre I am. But this message will primarily be for believers. I don't think it's going to make a lot of sense to non-Christians. And, well, quite frankly, most of them are going to be like, okay, dude, you, you've uh, gone off the deep end. I'll have you know I've been there for a very long time. I just normally don't show that side on YouTube. <laughs> but there is a time and a place for deeply spiritual things as well. And since this is a place and a platform of ministry for me, this is a place uh, for me to do the spiritual spooky stuff as well. I don't, I'm not going to say I'm going to speak on in tongues on camera, but is, if there is an interpretation of those tongues, I would be willing to do it. So we're on that note right there, uh, on to the dream. In this dream, it was a group of small children, and they had supernatural abilities, almost like like on the level of like Old Testament stuff we see or Jesus level stuff. I compare them kind of to superheroes. They were able to do their abilities pretty much at will, whenever they wanted, and they were just cool little things. And there came a point in this dream that all that really actually was not the primary focus. There came a point in the dream where the background went from a peaceful background to more of a war type background. And um and they're also, not only did they have supernatural abilities, but they were able to like easily move between the heavenly realm and the earthly realm. So their connection with heaven was incredibly strong. Again, almost an at will anytime they wanted type thing. So all of a sudden the earth has become very warzy, very um very hostile. And there are these group of there's a group of teenagers that surround these children. They start to bully them pick on them, tell them how they're weak, tell them how they're worthless, tell them how they don't amount to anything. And in the middle of all of this, a ghost dog appears running towards them and the children see it and their first thought isn't, you know, you know, you know, here comes the cavalry to save us or this ghost dog is going to help in addition with our powers to team up on these older kids, their first thought was we need to hide this and make sure the older kids don't see it. There was a concern that the heavenly realm and their gifts would be exposed. Um, they didn't want to like broadcast it or make it public. And then the, at, when the ghost dog arrived on the scene, one of the kids popped out of nowhere and said, hey guys, check out what I just saw in heaven. And they were like, quiet, we can't let these older kids hear about it. And that was the end of the dream. And this may, if you're a non-believer and still listening, this probably sounds incredibly bizarre and probably like some bad Chinese food I ate last night. And it wasn't Chinese food. I don't remember what it was. And that's also not the point. Um, I believe these things are from God, from the Spirit of God. I believe this dream wasn't just a natural occurrence of my mind. I believe there was a supernatural um, origin, the Holy Spirit, God. And I also believe there was a supernatural meaning for me to have for myself and also that I wanted to share with my audience. And the thought was this. We should flow in the supernatural and I certainly hope, I personally hope there comes a time when there arises a generation, I don't care what their age is, but a generation that just actively moves in spiritual gifts openly, freely, a lot and has open connection with the heavens, you know, sees Jesus, sees angels, talks with them, receives communications and instructions from them. I want something like that to become normal, and I want the supernatural to become commonplace. That would be a wonderful thing if Christians started walking in an anointing like that. But the concern wasn't like their enemies 
you know, defeating them or using their gifts to overwhelm them, much less kill them. Their concern was actually to conceal and to hide them and not share these things with these with these older, seemingly threatening teens. They, they I, I say teens because they just looked like older kids. Whereas, you know, we're taking like five year olds or some and matching them up with you know, 12 year olds to 17 year olds. I forget the exact age brackets of the younger and the older, but they, I just remember they were smaller children and older children, not quite adults. And the purpose that the younger children had was to keep these spiritual revelations and even the giftings themselves secret because they, the purpose wasn't to defend themselves. The purpose was to announce the kingdom and use their gifts entirely for the kingdom not for this world and not for any personal gain. They weren't to use the gifts to show off or to defeat their enemies or even, I would say not even necessarily, you know, do good in the world or establish some kind of Christian theocracy in this world. Their whole purpose was to exalt, elevate, and maintain the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And so this is actually the what I the main crux of all this that what I got from it was when you're moving in the gifts of the spirit when you are having open heavenly communications it's not something to be flaunted it's not something to pull down other human beings it's not something to exalt yourself your church or something that you want to build in this world those gifts are to be used for the kingdom of God solely and exclusively you use his giftings as he directs you for his kingdom and not your own purpose. That's what the gifts and the callings of God are for. And if you're still a non if you're a non-believer and still listening to this, well, thank you so much. And maybe you wanted a good laugh, maybe you wanted a rant, maybe you're genuinely curious. Um, and I can reference you to any one of my older messages. This is the most spiritual I've I've gone. The other messages will probably make a bit more sense to you. It'll be something you can at least wrap your mind around. Because, again, if you're not really a believer in God or spiritual things, this message is going to be, uh, okay, this guy is nuts. He thinks the supernatural is real. Not only does he believe in God, he also believes in, like, healings and miracles. Yes, I do. I believe those things are real. I believe those things happen in the church today. Not in America as much as I wish they would happen. Um, but they do still happen over here. I've seen a few things over here personally. I've heard about several. I've actually seen a few with my own eyes. Maybe in a future video I'll get into that. And to the believers, the message is right there. Um, may we all walk in the Spirit of God strongly and may His gifts flow freely through us. But the point is not to have the gift. The point is to show off or to, you know, again, build up our church, build up ourselves, build up some worldly wealth or worldly kingdom or get fans or admirers. The whole purpose is the kingdom of God. Just like it talks about in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, pursue the gifts of the Spirit. Pursue prophecy, but I show you a better way. All the gifts are passing away. All these things are in part. We see in part, we prophesy in part, and then that which is full comes, that which is in part will be done away. And for now, we have all of these things. And right now we have faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Last verse of 1 Corinthians 13. The purposes and the gifts. As great as they are, and as much as we should want them and pursue them and desire them. But the greater purpose is loving God, loving man, and extolling and exalting the kingdom of God. And making sure that not us... Not our government, not our country, not our personal interests are raised up, but that Jesus and the kingdom of heaven is lifted up. So hopefully this was uh, ministerial for you guys. Uh, and if, if some person who is not saved has watched this to the end, hopefully it provided you some quick entertainment. If nothing else, it provided you some insight into what I believe and how I see things. Feel free to laugh. Uh, feel free to hit that dislike button. That doesn't bother me one bit. Uh, thank God, America, I'm still free to believe and teach what I believe to be true, so far without legal penalty or repercussion. Thank you guys, lost and saved both, for watching this video. I love you both, and God bless you both.